Talk to me about diversity. Uh, I think that um, diversity is a gift uh, and that and not a problem. I think all of us belong to the one common race, the human race. And it doesn't matter where we were born. They, those were accidents of birth. We had nothing to do with it. And it, it depended on location and climate and a whole lot of things. Um, you know, if I were, had been born in Africa, then I would be black and I would be African. But I am European and I'm Irish. I was born in Ireland, so I'm as white. That's, that's, but my blood is the same color as, as the blood of an African, an Indian, a Chinese, you name it. So um, I think my um, vision of it would be to that, that we all have, we belong to the one human race. And the one human race, uh, you know, we're all people with equal dignity. That's our dignity. And so we have to be respected. So respect and tolerance and, you know, sharing and enrichment are all values that I see. And then they're based on my belief is I've come that you may have life and have it to the full. You are my people. Um, you know, I am uh, your God, whatever your God is. But there is a, a superior being. Do you think that to have a purposeful community, there, there, there should be love? Absolutely. There should be Absolutely. participation. Yeah. There should be togetherness. Absolutely. And, um, there should be support. Yeah, absolutely. I say that all well, the let's time. Let's talk about community. I don't know. Community. Community is about love. Marriage is about love. Community is about love. It's all about love, really. And there are three things, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest is love. And that's the only one that we need in the very end, how we have loved. Now, we get that from, from the nurturing that happens when we're children and from the family. And children are like sponges. They absorb it all, you know. And they're able to, in their talking afterwards, they come out with gems of stuff, you know. And, and they're caring. They're caring. Um, so love, support, ad advantage. Um, there's a difference between advantage and disadvantage. I think advantage uh, plays into um, confidence that people have afterwards. I mean, I sometimes have this talk with my nephew who uh, he doesn't drink and he doesn't smoke either. But he, he's a, and he's very much with a work ethic, a very strong work ethic. And he's a bit intolerant of people who, um, who don't, uh, you know, who, who let themselves down, you know, they, they drink too much or they, you know, they mess around or something like that. And he said, he says to me, you know, but why do they do that? It's their own fault. Why are they doing that? And I say, John, it's about advantage and disadvantage. Now, you grew up with advantage. You didn't see, your, you, your role models were not that. But some of these kids have, haven't got those role models. So they go down a different way. And unless they're able to meet up in life with, you know, they come to the end of the road maybe themselves and they have to, to to think about what's going on and what what kind of a life am I living? It's not it's not not good for me. If they come to it themselves, or if they come to a situation where they're empowered to come to it, that's what Sister Concilio has done with alcoholics in Kuhnmuira and set up centres in in many places. She's very well respected and very well known, and she has done it for rich and poor alike. 
you know, in in this country. If you were to drive home the message of a purposeful community to a people now, what would you be telling them to understand what a purposeful and strong community means? How would you define and what would you tell them about what a community is? Because it's easy to say, oh, it's a Nigerian community. But sometimes you, you, you want to imagine, do this community understand what it really takes to be a community? Yeah. So yeah. how would you yeah. talk to them to know that if they have a stronger community of love, support and participation, that things could be different? Well, definitely. Uh, they have to. I see it. I see it um, now in, in uh, areas uh, where you have a strong sense of community, where you have the GAA, for example. It's a very strong sense of community all over Ireland, uh, where they play games like rugby or, or soccer or something like that. They probably have a community um, experiences there as well. You have community with, with people, age action for older people. That's a, a great sense. You have the women's groups. You have uh, the ICA, which is the Irish Country Women's Associations. I've seen those people where they have a very strong connection. Some of the parishes, depending on where, there are some dead parishes, but there are some parishes with great, great community. Now, that is, uh, you usually have leaders in those communities. You have, you have somebody who has an idea, who's able to get people together. Schools form communities as well. Uh, sometimes with the, with the students, sometimes with the parents too. But you need strong leadership there. But um, I would think that um, it demands um, unselfishness. You have to give it time. You have to give it whatever is your gift, whatever is your talent. It's not for you alone. It's in order to be shared with others. There are many gifts same spirit, same God, you know, and the more we can share. And I think what our world needs at the moment is peace. There are, there are so many areas of discord, of, um, you know, competition, uh, of haves and have nots and all that sort of thing. That doesn't contribute to um, good community. But I guess we used to always say the family was the, the nucleus, however, however that family is configured. There's all sorts of configurations of family now, but where there is love, there is God. So community and is God about sharing. is love. It's about caring and sharing. And it's about, yeah. And in the end of it all, we leave it all behind. Well, there is a tendency in in life in society um at times to um to give more um emphasis to the individual to the individual and to being individualistic rather than community minded now um i think um what 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 I would be in favour of. We are all individuals. We all have our own personalities. But we are gifted. And it's, it's not just for me alone. You can't, we can't live in isolation. We are community people. Um, you know, the Trinity is community. The Father, the Son and the Spirit is a trinity of community which binds us together. And so... Um, um, you know, to progress in life, to be fulfilled, to be happy, to be more, um, is about uh, happiness in community, creating community. And you have to put work into it. It doesn't happen. You have to make it happen. And how do you make it happen? Well, you make it happen with your children, uh, first of all, in that you, you're aware of them and they uh, see the models in their own homes and so helping one another doing little chores all that sort of thing getting praise for it you know that's all very good 
sometimes my my folks uh, in the drop-in sometimes um, Sharon especially she kind of worries about me sometimes that she thinks I'm doing too much and all that sort of thing but I'm saying Sharon this is my vocation in life she's like hey you know don't don't take on that or something like that um, you, you know you, you should be taking a bit more care of yourself and I say to her you know but I'm happy to do that I'm free to do that I have all my needs fulfilled somebody was living in I'm Rachma and her kids are four children living over in accommodation in on Gardner Street I'm concerned about them I'm I'm trying to um, further their cause um, you know which eventually will lead them to getting a council house um, you know that's uh, that's that's what I do I don't have a husband I don't have children um, so I'm not weighed down by domestic chores <laughs> so thanks be to God I'm empowered to do that can you be compassionate without being selfless is it possible really well, I, I think compassion really draws you out of yourself. So I think you have to be selfless. It, it, well, rather than ha have to be selfish, you can't be selfish. Selfish people don't, don't um, reach out very much if they're totally caught up with themselves. And I do know a couple of people who are religious as well and they're up there about ideas and theologies and all that sort of thing but they're not they don't reach out to people and I say to myself well that's not my spirituality I don't you know subscribe to that so it doesn't make any sense to me but if I see somebody struggling and they're, you know, compassionate and reaching out, that's where I see the real, the real spirituality. So where you have compassion, where you have reaching out, where you have, you, you have to be unselfish, unselfish. You, it draws it out of you, you know. Otherwise you turn the other way. Thank you so much, Sister K. It was nice well, talking to you. But it's, it's always nice talking to you, Peter, because you're an idealist. <laughs> and, um, uh,